Well, winter has definitely arrived in Melbourne and it feels like we've had winter for a few months now, but it's always a good chance to have a hot cup of tea or coffee. And in today's lesson, we're going to be learning how to draw a mug or a large teacup. I don't know what you call this, but uh, I like it anyway. So this is my strawberry mug, I'll call it that. So uh, grab a mug, grab some paper and a grey lead pencil, an eraser and sharpener, and let's get started. Here is the mug that I'm going to be drawing uh, with the lovely strawberries on it and the strawberry flowers and um, I've got quite a lot of these that I use regularly when guests come around. Uh, what is it? Empire Ware, Stoke-on-Trent. So yeah, nice to drink out of but uh, always a challenge to keep the bottom um, inside it nice and clean. Anyway, before we start to draw that, I just want us to go over uh, how to draw a cylinder shape. So I'll just grab a pen. Drawing a cylinder, often I find that my students will I tend to get the top of a cylinder correct. Wonky, but never mind. Um, but then the bottom goes like that and they fail to see that what happens at the top should happen bottom as well pretty much. We're repeating that shape at the bottom. So just to go at it properly, so you'll have the oval at the top. And then if it was a glass, you would see through it like that as well. Um, so you'd be able to see the back edge. So this one here, let's call that A, also B down there. Except if you're doing a mug and it's not see-through, then you won't see that bit. And this bit here, which we shall call is repeated down here as well. So the front is repeated, looks like a parallel curve. And then the back is repeated as well. So that's the basic um, guideline. Those are the basic guidelines for drawing a cylinder width and I might just use the grey lead first to uh, sketch out. Let's say we were doing a just a boring old round mug, the kind that I tend to stir my scrambled eggs in before I cook them. <laughs> the ones that aren't all decorative. So I'll just draw that in. So there's my basic mug shape. And if I was shading it in with fine liner, and if if it's if you don't feel like you're ready for fine liner, then by all means for this activity, 
You could use some um, grey lead, even colour pencils if you like. Grey lead is easier to use than fine liner and in generally. I'll just go over the outline quickly. It's always more challenging the fine line or a pen because once it's on the page it's pretty hard to get rid of it so for this activity you've just got to keep in mind okay we're sketching so it doesn't matter if you've got those extra little lines going here and there we're just practicing okay and that takes the pressure off now i will just bit of a rim there. So uh, let's say that our light source is over here. The old light source again, or young. So we will expect the shadow to be over here and it to be lighter here. And we would expect to see shadow in here as well. So I'll just use some diagonal strokes. Could come across a bit more. Oops, that was a bit heavy. And then I'll go over them again. And again, but I'm going further out this time. I should have gone further across with single strokes before, because you can see there, I've got that little jagged bit, but that's okay for this quick practice. Move across a bit more, go closer together with your lines, and have it darker, and you can do it once more. Of those little white bits. Excuse the white stuff on my fingers. I was putting some putty on a, an old frame earlier, trying to upcycle a frame I bought on the weekend. And, um, yes, my hands look like I'm a real artist. All right, so that's shading on that side of the mug. We would have some shading across here. It might change directions a little bit and then sort of meet in the middle perhaps. It's interesting to see what happens on the handles when it changes direction. We could go a bit darker again. A bit more 3D and then inside that part there will be lighter and this bit here, because the sun or the light is hitting the other side of the mug, and so I have lines down on this side. Now I've done diagonal, but you could also do curved or straight up and down if you like. You could do cross hatching like this. Maybe make it a little bit lighter. At least add a bit of a light tone across here with just a few lines. Um, then, because I've got cross hatching there, it kind of looks a bit weird if I don't have some over here. So I can then just do a few more. I might do some curved lines it's across here as well. So balance it out a bit. Okay, and then shadow. I 
always want our dark smiley shadow at the bottom of curved objects like that and so there we go that is just a practice run at doing a simple mug so if you have a simple mug I'm not talking about your face but something to drink out of then um, grab it and have a go at doing that quick sketch and now I shall move into doing my strawberry mug Okay, so let's start drawing the strawberry mug. I'm using a B pencil, which I don't think is a pencil for bees, uh, but I want to use one that's a bit darker just so that it will show up better on the camera, but I would suggest for you to use uh, an HB or 2H, something that's fairly light, because you don't want all the gray lead bits to uh, be seen towards the end necessarily. So I'm just looking down at the strawberry mug and um, something I didn't mention before was that when you're looking down on top of the mug you'll see a circle and as it is changing direction, the circle becomes an oval and the closer to your eyes it gets, I'm currently tipping out my tea, my pretend tea, um, so the closer to your eyes it gets, I could go this way, that might make more sense, um, the, the less of an oval you'll see, so it will get narrower and narrower, whichever way you go. So um, <laughs> normally I'd have um, the webcam right in front of me looking at my face for my students, so I just know exactly how to hold it, but <laughs> I'm looking at my phone mounted above my desk. So anyway, um, so just a quick little tip that, yeah, so that shape will always change depending on where it is at your eye level. If it's at eye level, you'll just pretty almost see a straight line across there. If you're looking in it, you'll see a circle. But if it's just a bit lower than your eye level, you'll see that. If it's higher than your eye level, then you will see more of a reverse curve, like a sad face. I don't know what the opposite of a smile is. Not exactly a frown, because if you're sad, you don't necessarily frown. But anyway, the opposite of a smile curve. So, um, yeah, that's just a quick tip. All right, so I've got my strawberry mug on a bit of white paper. You don't have to do this, but it just helps you to be able to see the shadows, particularly around the mug. Whereas if you've, if I had it on my colourful cloth here, then I'm, I'm really going to struggle to see any shadow around it. Alright, so I'll just position it where I would like it to be. And I shall start sketching. And there's not necessarily a correct place to start drawing. But you're probably either going to start drawing the the top oval, almost circle from where I'm sitting, but not quite, the top oval of the mug, or you might start with the bottom curve. You could also start with the sides as well, but uh, it's probably best to start with one or the other of the ovals. And don't expect that you're going to get it right the first time. I'm certainly not expecting I will get it right the first time. I'm going to have to just loosely sketch it around. Loose lines like fine hairs. <laughs> um, until I'm happy with that basic shape. And I can refine it a bit more. Once I've got the other bits and pieces in, uh, I think I need to go make it a bit deeper. 
and I think I need to have a sip of tea, which is quite appropriate, I think. It's um, honey, chamomile, and I think it might have mint in it. Oh, and Tulsi or Holly Basil, which is meant to be very good for you. Nice and relaxing. Okay, so you want to try and make sure that both sides are as symmetrical as possible. Now, one thing that you could do is, and if you want to use a ruler, you could do that. I'll just quickly sketch it in for you. So you could just do a cross grid, simple cross grid. I probably should have used a ruler there, but anyway, I still can because I can rub those other bits out. So I'll just pop that line in there. That's my nice straight line. Okay. And now I will look at each segment and I want to try and make sure that they're the same. And I need to bring this one, I think, over a bit. And this is where you could get out your ruler or use your thumb like you've seen in the movies. Okay, so 4.5, and looks like I just need to come over a tiny bit more. Now, you don't have to be this precise, but if you're trying to make it look really like the proper thing, then by all means, go and do that. Uh, so that will come down this way. And then I want to make sure that we're pretty much the same on the top and the bottom. There will, perspective does come into it a bit, so the back could be a little bit shorter than the front, but really at this stage doesn't matter too much. Um, I call that 3.2 and 3.6, so I'll bring that back up to there, just loosely. Or if you wanted to speed up the process and get onto the pen work, you could just use a little projector, <laughs> which is um, taking a leaf out of Vermeer's book, I think. Okay, so I shall just tidy that up now. And hopefully I'm rubbing at the right bits there. Try not to sneeze. Play the wobble board. Um, just get rid of this. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. I could work at it a bit more, but I don't think you want to sit around waiting for me to get this exactly right. Okay. Then from there, I'm going to add in my bits on the side. So on the, this mug, it, they sort of come in a bit of a curve at the top, and then we have the not exactly straight line, just a slight curve in it. We could actually extend that line to make a cross. A cross is always a good thing to line everything up to. Okay. Always gives good perspective. And then Bring it out a bit there, and I want to repeat that curve pretty much down lower. Come out a bit, 
and I'm looking to see whether the bottom bit is a bit narrower and I think it should be a bit narrower so I won't go out quite as far as before. And I'm just going to use the pencil and compare the side. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just putting my finger on the pencil and lining it up against the side of the mug. And then I'm going to move it upwards. And it's, oh, that's cool. From where I'm sitting, the side of the mug is the same length or height or whatever. So the distance from the top to the bottom of the mug on the front is the same as the of the front to the back of the oval on top of the mug. So then if I do put that against there and then move it down, I can work out where I need to go to. So about there. And just looking to see whether I need to make the curve a bit sharper. And I think that's pretty good. Alright, so I've got my basic mug shape, except I need to now add the handle. And I'm looking at around this area on the mug. Sorry, I can't, I, I don't think I better tip up the mug because then I might lose my spot. Um, but I'm looking at this bit here and where the handle touches the side. And it comes to about there. So just looking at different angles, different spots. And we'll just roughly sketch it in. The bottom comes up a little bit. And then it sort of curves up this way and out. And around like that. I can use my thumb and go to the edge of the handle and then see how far it goes in from the edge of the top of the mug and it, it's probably a third of the top so I'll pop it down there that's right and then yes so I think I've actually got that pretty much spot on And I'm just working out the halfway point. And that would be there. So I think that my handle on this side needs to just come up like that. And then it will sort of curve in on itself. So I need to Come in on that side, on the inside, little knobby thing, and then nice smooth shape. And it's there's a slight point where it touches up there. So I'll curve around and I'll just smooth that bit like that. It's a bit of a line that comes down there. Okay, so just trying to make both sides look a bit more the same. So that's the, the main bits. So I can now I think I'm safe. Uh, I might just put in the flower on the front, which is pretty much in the middle there. 
I'll just put a little dot there so that I know that that's where it needs to go. And now I can take the cross grid away and neaten things up a little bit more. And the rest of it I can probably just rub out at the very end once I've done fine liner. Do the wobble board again and then vacuum later. And just touch up those little bits. So for today, I think I am just going to add in all the details with grey lead and then next time we can actually work on the fine liner parts. So shading with fine liner. Break it up into two main stages, I think. So you could either draw from the photo that I'll include of this mug, or you can just grab your own mug or teacup, something that appeals more to you and have a go with that one. Or you could do both if you really wanted. Okay, that's probably too high compared to the other side. So lots of rubbing out at this stage. So there's a thin gold strip at the bottom. Okay, that's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Just bring that curve up a little bit there. And there is a bit of gold on the rim. Which is why we don't put it in the dishwasher. I don't know why I'm saying we, because I'm the only one that loads a dishwasher. Because I'm the only one that lives here. Apart from the fish, and they're not much help. Oops. A little bit hairy there, I might just touch this bit up. to fix it now rather than regret it later. It was probably too flat. Mm. 
Okay, I'm still having some trouble with that bit. How are you going with yours? Assuming that you're actually drawing while I am. Okay, still a bit wonky. And I think I'm at the point where I'll just say, okay, that'll do. Okay. And now I get the fun part of doing the flower and the strawberries. And I don't need to put in all the little details necessarily with grey lead. I can do a lot of that fine stuff just with the fine liner itself. But if you feel like you want to play it safe, then by all means um, use the grey lead for the details as well. I think I uh, need to spread out some of them, says the perfectionist in me. So if you want to make yours more of it, just a rough sketch, go for it um, and not stress about the details exactly. Anyway, that's pretty good. Okay, and then there's a little pointy things. They're called brats or something. I can't remember. Or sepals. <laughs> I know I heard the name last year as I was teaching um, year four science or something online. Okay little leaf. I've probably made it too big, but oh well. I'll just change the design a bit. And apologise to the mug company later. So we've got a strawberry up the top. Yeah, so I have made the bit in the middle of the flower and stuff a bit too big because I'm noticing this. There should be more space between them. But we'll just put up with it. Strawberry down the bottom, cute little leafy thing sticking out, and then a stem that comes over and down. And then there's something, what's that? That's a leaf. And we've got a bit of stem curving around here, which can 
next to another strawberry. Well, the strawberry thief bird certainly hasn't arrived on this mug yet, because all the strawberries are still there. stem the annoying thing is I can't eat strawberries at the moment because of this rigid and oh not antihistamine, the low histamine diet that I'm on to try and clear up the sinuses. I can have blueberries in abundance, but and raspberries in moderation, but strawberries I think are off the list. But hopefully one day soon they'll come back on the list with a vengeance. Although raspberries are my favourite. The blueberries are very nice on porridge. Alright, let's give it some hair. And then there's some little details here that are hard to make out. a leaf so again it's not exactly what's there as far as the size oh, and there's a little bit of leaf poking up the top everything else now. Oh, and I just noticed on the handle there's just that little strip of gold. Okay, and I might just pop in a mark to show where the shadow is. A little bit of a line. And there's a bit of shadow just around up here. And I think that will do us for today. So there is the preparatory, I said that correctly, I think, drawing for Mr. Kingdom's strawberry mug. The cool thing is that I get to say stay tuned till next time when we shall finish the mug. And if you like my mug, <laughs> or if you like this video of me drawing the mug, then please remember to click the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And head over to my website as well, which is www.robertkingdomart.com. And you could also check out my Zazzle store and see what products I have up for sale there. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed our session today and I look forward to catching you next time when we shall finish the mug. Music